think we can get started. Um, so the uh, agenda for today's meeting is uh, what what are the next steps needed for to get the receiver up and running? There are a few pending items from the current uh, transmitter project, like we need to carry out integration and um, testing and some code improvements, removing of, um, AD 9371 DMA uh, blocks. So uh, we can come to those ones later, but uh, priority is uh, main aim of this meeting is to, uh, to lay out a broad level plan about uh, the receiver uh, with regard specific to FPJ development. I think uh, now I can hand over to Thomas. Um, um, hey, so I saw from the chat that Michelle mentioned that there was some talk of maybe moving to the GSE implementation next rather than in receiver. So I don't know if that's that's next in the pipeline or yeah, but yeah. I remember yes. Um. So yeah, I mean, there's really the way as I see it. There's there's two next big steps, which are the the receiver and the let's say the I don't know the data handling section. So when the received data comes in and gets combined and then queued up to be retransmitted. Um, both of them are a considerable amount of work. So yeah, I guess we could probably even do them in parallel. Mm -hmm. So on the receiver, I have started looking at it. Um, I think there's going to be a bit of algorithm work before we get to the actual FPJ implementation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I've started looking at. But yeah, we'll need to probably have some Python models of the actual algorithm that we want to implement before we get to the, the RTL level. Uh, what sort of algorithm work? Uh, any? Yeah, so basically the, um, well, a high level of the receiver is going to be composed of, well, a match filter, um, symbol synchronization, timing, phase synchronization, mm -hmm. um, and then some kind of um, demodulator. So the filter and the demodulator for basically QAM or QPSK are quite straightforward, but the, syn the synchronization algorithms are a bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so basically I think we need to get a model of that in some kind of high level programming language to test the algorithm performance before we can actually start to do the RTL. Michelle, uh, Thomas just mentioned that uh, we were thinking of uh, next priority to be receiver, but you mentioned in Slack about GSC. So uh, can you share your thoughts? So what should be the next item of priority? The, the reason I brought it up is because there is actually several things that we could tackle from here. And so, and I think that the, the GSE, the, the transport layer and presenting um, data to flow through to the, the transmitter can be done in parallel with, with beginning the receiver work. So I didn't intend uh, for that to be, uh, to come across as some sort of either okay. or uh, at all. Um, so the, the advantage there would be that the, you know, we've talked, we talked about this right before Ham Expo, would be that the transmitter would actually have um, traction on some, some useful data you know, things that, that would be, make a good demo. Uh, so for the purposes of, of making good demonstrations, then sorting out how to feed the data into the transmitter, uh, apart from a receiver system, uh, mm -hmm. would be of value. So, so that was that was what I intended by, by bringing that up. I think it would be good to, to have some parallel developments because, um, yeah, I think with the kind of asynchronous nature of development, if too many too many people are working in one sec one portion of the system. It's not that efficient. Um, yeah, I think probably parallel developments is, is a good idea. Yeah, it it um it it does also broaden a little bit um, the the things that people can can do. That we have a number of volunteers that are um, enthusiastic, maybe not as um, proficient with HDL as as they. They would like to be, but really want to be involved. But they don't want to be part of something that they that they perceive as a critical path, or you know, there, there's a lot of that. And 
it, it's, it's not just us. This is a pretty common thing in, in any volunteer position and even in commercial places uh, where, you know, people are a little hesitant to, to sign up for something that they can, you know, if there's, if it's, if it's one path forward and this is the, the direction that the, the thing is going, um, it's a very binary choice. So um, I, I think it would be worth spreading out a little bit and, and tackling some things that can feed into the transmitter part. The care that we have to take there is to make sure that we have uh, the interfaces or the, the method of presenting the data somewhat settled so that we don't have uh, things shifting uh, too much or too spread out. Mm -hmm. This is the opinion of one 67-year-old man who's managed research for decades and done a lot of it. The way to overcome imposter syndrome is fake it until you make it and have the pressure of a deadline. That's worked for us so far. Yeah, I think deadlines are, are, are brilliant for a forcing function to, to really make things come together. I think we found that with the Ham Expo. Um, we didn't quite make it 100%, but we got very, very close um, because of having that, that deadline. Yeah, should we should we pick something else in the future coming up that uh, that might be our next demo and 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 do it again? Yeah, I think that's sensible. Yep, I agree. Okay, yeah, well, uh, I have a good list of the um, when when we were talking about um, conferences and other meetings um, a couple of weeks ago. That that list I'm supposed to to publish. Uh, and I've been asked about it several times since then. So what I'll do is is actually go ahead and, and make that neat and uh, presentable and then look really hard at the scheduled events. Uh, it just came out that uh, DEF CON is virtual. Um, we've, we've frequently demonstrated at DEF CON and that's been a really fun and, and rewarding thing. With it being virtual, it's a little different. They don't do a lot of the tech demos and things like that. Um, but anyway, that I'll I'll take that on to try to figure out what might be a good place to demonstrate. And if anyone has any suggestions that weren't already on the list or aren't on the list that I'm going to put out later today, then uh, let me know. So we'll go ahead and do that again. We'll pick something that we're going to target as a demonstration, and it will it will serve as a, a rallying point and a fo focus for for the work. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, on your point about the interfaces. I think that's a very valid point. Um, and maybe that comes into the scoping of the, the GSE work because that's really the the center point where things come into and, and leave. So they're having a good yeah, a good specification of, of the interfaces there would define a lot of the interfaces with the whole system. So I think that if we just say GSE for receive, that, that will that will really help and that will make both of the sections of work work together. Um, really well. I think I agree with you. Uh, considering that uh, in Ham Expo, we missed the thing for demoing transmitter. So getting that part complete, and as Thomas mentioned that for receiver, uh, re receiver uh, we have to do some algorithm development first before we move to RTL part. So if we can take these activities parallel uh, and make the transmitter as a demoable demo box along with GSC work, and parallelly continue with some Python development, which paves the way for RTA development uh, for future receiver. I think that, 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 that's a good way to move forward. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah, concur. I the other thing that I've also thinking about, which is maybe slightly outside the scope of this meeting, but maybe starting some of the hardware aspects as well. So I'm just trying mm -hmm. to think forward to if we have the receiver and the transmitter get into a mature state we don't then want to have to start the hardware from from zero so maybe also trying to kick that off a little bit in parallel as well there's a risk of spreading ourselves too thin but at the same time we want to get the ball rolling thomas do we have capacity for to for that part what do um you... i don't know i have the feeling that if we if we tried to kick it off there might be people in the community that would be interested in, in working on it okay. is my gut feeling mm -hmm. i don't have any uh, data to back that up okay i agree i think yeah. your i think your instincts are good here um but it, it will take uh and, and there may be some false starts and everything and, it, and i we do have people that are interested in layout 
Uh, and we do have people that, that aren't here currently uh, due to health health reasons that are on the way back that, that would be um, well positioned to, to put some horsepower uh, behind that too. So it, it will get better, but I would say like the two things that we're talking about, the the algorithm development, yes, uh, absolutely. And then the GSE transmitter side. So those two sections, I think we can go ahead and start a parallel development on those and articulate it and all of that, and then pick a deadline uh, for, yeah, pick the deadlines that, that we that we want. And then the, the layout though, we'll start recruiting and building and waiting and seeing. Um, so there's there's at least four people that I can think of that, that may want to start now. So it would be like a trailing, trailing mm -hmm. behind these other two, rather than all three abreast, you know, marching into the future. Yep. yep. Makes so sense. I, I can, I can help with that. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, considering uh, GSC is a broad level uh, activity, then we have this uh, Python algorithm development, and then we have uh, some modifications uh, related to transmitter that Thomas, we talked about, like uh, maybe removing of uh, AD 937 DMA blocks and uh, getting the system ready. So I think these uh, four level, four block level, um, broad level items we have going forward. And then uh, what I think is that um, we, 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 can, we can go through these points and then uh, divide them into further tasks to as we move forward for the next steps. Sounds good. Um, what's the best way to document and communicate this to, to the wider community, um, an email or some kind of website, or I don't know what's your what your thoughts are. Well, I don't know. Did, how did you how did you think the Ham Expo um, repo worked for the for organizing the Ham Expo? Um, it was a branch, and then I think it became a repo. How how did that work out? Um, I think it worked generally okay. Um, multiple people were committing to it and in pull requests, so I think that was generally positive. Um, Okay, yeah. so so let's. I mean, for the for the people that are, I, I think we should do that again. That that seemed to work really well, and it was easy to share, and easy to talk about, and easy to point people to. So, I think that that if we do that again, that that either make another repo. I know we talked about there's differences between branches and repos and everything, but if we make another repository or fork, then and then fold every. It, it allows us to fold everything back when it's completely done. Uh, I that that worked that worked really well i think and um if we if we want to to do this next set of work using that as a model um then then it would uh it would be easy to share and and easy to talk about and and point to okay yeah that sounds good yeah repo is one thing i think you were also also asking about uh how we can discuss this whether slack or email oh so, yeah good yeah, question thoughts. yeah so i think yeah that kind of in my mind, I had a kind of a, a spec of the a light uh, work package description. And I think that if we do like the, the repo with the readme, then that kind of covers that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last time Slack also helped me a lot uh, personally, uh, whenever I uh, needed to find out what all work items are remaining, where I should work, I used to uh, refer to that Slack list of points and then it helped me a lot. Hmm, nice. Yeah, uh, Thomas. One thing. Uh, once we, uh, based on based on our inputs, once we break down into smaller tasks, uh, one thing I missed in Slack was suppose one task is there, and I still find it quite broad, and I want to narrow it down further. Uh, I can't add any more tasks to the pinned item. So, is there any other way um, which we can? use um not that i can think of off the top of my head but maybe we can um the trello boards might be a better way to do that because the trello boards have a built-in um mm. list function and breakdown thing that that has served fairly well for some of the work that we've gotten done over the past six months I know it doesn't easily yeah. integrate with other things. You have to go to Trello. You know, it is pinned to general. So the general chat channel has the Trello boards pinned to the top, or it's actually in the the description of the of the channel. Um, but for for breaking things down and adding lots of granularity to tasks, Trello isn't that 
isn't bad. Okay. 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 Well, so maybe a high level description on a on a repo readme and then Trello for yeah. more details. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um, and one more thing, Thomas. Uh, mm -hmm. I I can read about GSC. It's general. It will be generally available on. Uh, I can search on Google uh, about specifics for receiver. The first stage of receiver about algorithm. I need some technical papers or or you, if you can guide me where I can go through. Yep. Yep. Certainly. Um. I'll. Like I said, we start looking into it a bit. Um. I'll mm -hmm. create a repo then, and then I'll start putting stuff there, and I'll send you a link. Um. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, right. and I, I have, there's one particular paper that I keep going back to for receive for DVB S2. And I'll, uh, it's in our repo, but it's kind of buried in the giant pile of documents. And I'll make sure that that particular one is highlighted in, in the FPGA channel. It's, it's helped me uh, get oriented. And I'm almost completely sure that Thomas already knows about this paper. And it's one of, one of the ones that he's probably bookmarked. So there's, I'm mm -hmm. very much looking forward to to any uh, to helping with any sort of technical paper uh, accrual, and uh, oh, yes. looking <laughs> very much looking forward to what Thomas uh, recommends. Okay, excellent. And anything from Science Direct also, Michelle? Anything from where? Science Direct. Uh, there are lots of paper now under. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, but if you if you give me a list, I can I can go do my very best to okay, uh, yeah. to find the resources. I do have a list. Yeah, I will share it with you. Okay, thanks. So yeah, we have a path forward. Uh, Tom, anything from your side? No, I'm happy. I'm happy. Um, well, certainly the the Python stuff. I can start draft, drafting the um, what's ready in my head, so I can I can do that part certainly. Um, Cool. Okay. Uh, GSC and uh, other work in Transmitter, I can take ownership of that. Okay, I got that. And then, oh, okay. So the was, and then there's some discussions about modifying the transmitter with respect to backing yes. away or back. Is that the yeah. is that the one you're talking about? Yes. Okay, got it. Okay. And and Thomas, what I'm thinking is, uh, I can prepare based on the like for GSC and uh, the change that's needed in transmitter. I can prepare a RFC email and then send it across for discussion. Will that work for you? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that works for me. Yep. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. That's all. That's all we need to discuss. Anything else from anyone else? Cool. No, I'm just super excited. This is amazing work, and it's uh, starting to. Um, it, it made waves from the beginning. Um, there's been lots of positive feedback, uh, some negative feedback from grumpy people that don't like FPGAs, um, and then <laughs> and have opinions. And uh, and yeah, I thought that the uh, the point about because when I asked uh, Anshul in the, during his presentation if you had to do it all over again, you know, would you do it differently? And he says, well, you know, maybe use a general pro processor. And that brings up this amazingly accurate thing about FPGAs versus ASICs versus GPUs versus general purpose processors. That it's always this weird balancing act. It's it's you know that that you you have a hugely successful thing when you when you hit the right technology at the right time with the right code. And, um, you know, this, the LDPC and the other DBB S2 stuff really fit very well in FPGA. However, we have access to such powerful general purpose processors. And it is true that the population of developers and users in like C and C++ is uh, substantially larger. Um, so I thought that was a, a, a very interesting response, and and it it's it did not go unnoticed or anything like that. Um, and we do have a code base in in C uh, from Amit uh, in on hmm. who who wrote uh, stuff, and and so we we do try to kind of keep this three legged stool going and to look and see if there is a breakthrough that's happening in in various areas. But but I thought that was a a very interesting point, and I thought that. It was very good to to uh, present it uh, in a in a forum like that. And then the GPU side, we do actually have an opportunity here to take the GPU code from Charles Brain and run with it. And we're looking at that very very closely and trying to see what we can do to to get some funding and some some uh, uh, publishing and development for for that. Uh, so whatever works. Um, 
my personal favorite is FPGA and ASIC design because there's just no replacement for doing things efficiently in hardware. Once you get it um, up to a point where where you can leverage the the expense and the overhead of the hardware, and I think that we're there, that this is really is the right path, and that we're we're going to produce something of great value. All right, I'll get to work and. Um, Thank you, everybody. This was was really good. Thank you very much to Anshul for organizing this. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Cool. Speak to you guys soon. See you yeah. bet. Bye.